What's up guys, Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Well. Just a quick introduction to this video. This is a snippet from Masterclass 8 on Psychology and Discipline. This video was released several days ago to the Patreon community. The video in its entirety is an hour and 15 minutes long. The video you're watching here on YouTube is 15 minutes. I think it's a really good uh, snippet from the Masterclass series. And if you like this type of content, consider joining Patreon, the Elite Plus tier right now. There's nine seats available that include the Masterclass content. The Masterclass is about eight hours of content right now and eight videos. The plan is to have 12 videos and around 12 hours of premium content. But do enjoy the, this clip on this video. Stay tuned to the end of the video for more information about how you can get access to this content. What's up guys, Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Wealth. Excited to bring you video number eight in the Masterclass series. I'm excited about this video. I've spent some time making it. It is one of my favorite topics. Today we're gonna to talk about psychology and discipline and more specifically psychology as it relates to investing, of course. So we're gonna look more into behavioral finance. Now this is a really broad topic and you could spend <laughs> hours and hours doing these classes just on this topic. You could spend a lifetime studying this, and it's something that's really interesting to me. The, the human brain is very complex. It's the most complex organ. We're still learning more about the human brain, neuroscience, but we, we definitely know that there are personality. Each person is wired completely differently. So the way that I'm wired, the way that you're wired, we're wired differently. And depending on where a person's from, even if you're from the United States, you could be from Georgia and be from California and be wired completely differently based on where you grew up, how you grew up, your parents, the people around you, you know, your age, everything, your age, every single person. You can have two identical, you know, same age, same city, and you're going to be wired differently. You're even born with certain DNA traits, okay? So why is this important as an investor? It's important as an investor, it's really important, not just as an, as an investor, but really in life. If you think about, I talk about this a lot. I talk about, I like, play, I like to play games that are hard to lose. And in order to know how to win a game, you got to understand the rules of the game. And I often talk about how if you understand the rules of Wall Street, it makes it a lot easier to play the game and to win. At least have an understanding of it so you're not scared out of it. And that's where that fear comes in. We talk about fear. We talk about discipline. We talk about you know fear of missing out, all those different things. And a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about today will tie back into the top 15 investing rules. I'll get more to that in a second. But the point here I want to make is that if you think of psychology and discipline, it's not just for investors. It's for traders. But even beyond the stock market and beyond finances, it can help you in your regular everyday life. It can help you in sports. Think about if you want to lose weight, if you want to work out at five o'clock in the morning, it takes a lot of discipline to be able to do that every single day. And if you understand your brain and how you're wired and you understand the psychology behind how you're wired, it makes it a lot easier to have that discipline. So what we're going to focus on today is going to be essentially behavioral economics. And we're going to talk about things like biases. We're going to talk about portfolio structure. We're going to talk about basically the way our brains are wired so that we can understand our brains a little better, not only as just a human, human you know, species, but each individual and how your specific brain is wired differently than mine. And if you can understand just generalizations, how the brain works, and then try to understand your own brain a little bit better, it'll help you be a better investor make more intelligent decisions and not make as many mistakes. I'll, I'll, I'll give you one example. So let's just say we're going to play a game and the game is, you know, the game of life. And I'm going to tell you that, you know, investing is not that complicated. Assuming you invest in a diverse, diversified portfolio that you do a little bit of homework, a little due diligence, that you can invest in the stock market and become very wealthy over time by having discipline and saving a percentage of your income and having that grow and compound over time, and you'll have a lot of money. But before we start the game, I tell you that now there's going to be bumps along the way. There's going to be times where the market runs really hot and you're making a lot of money in a little, a little, a short duration of time, just like we did 
recently here in the beginning of 2021, there's going to be times when the market sells off and it seems scary, maybe painful. But at the end of the game in 20, 30 years, you're going to have a lot more money. And you know exactly what's going to happen because I'm telling you, I'm telling you that there's going to be times where the market's going to sell off, where you're going to have fear. You're going to second guess like, well, what if the whole market goes to zero? Like what, what if I shouldn't have been doing this? Why did I do this? I'm going to tell you that you're, you're going to do that. This is going to happen to you, but you're still going to end up with a lot more money in 20, 30 years and probably be very wealthy. You'd probably do it, right? You'd probably do it and say, yeah, no big deal. I, I, I can take some pain and I understand the game and that there's going to be times where it runs hot, times where it runs cold, but I'm going to be buying along the way, buying opportunity, doing my homework, making sure I'm diversified, making sure I'm in the right stocks, the right companies. And I'm going to have a lot more money in 20, 30 years. And it seems simple, right? And that's really all there is to it. But the problem is this. Our brain wants to live in the moment all the time. It's hard for us to think about two years, four years, five years, 10 years down the road. You're focused on right now. What, what if the market goes to zero right now? What if it goes lower? I'm going to have all this remorse and regret that I didn't have more cash, that I should have waited before I, I bought this specific stock. I knew, it, I knew it was going to go lower. All those things are natural human emotions, and they're biases that we're going to cover in this video. So I'm excited to get this kicked off. I really, I really do have a passion for this, guys, and I hope you enjoy this video. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, let's get this party started. Master class number eight. This is going to be a good one, guys. Stock market investing, psychology, and discipline. This is a good, this is a really good topic, not only for investing, but just for general life, everything. You can use these principles really every single day. And that's what I like about it. So let's get this baby kicked off. Let's first talk about FOMO, because that's probably, if you think about emotion and psychology, it's probably everybody knows what FOMO is, right? So fear of missing out. There's also something called FOL, which you might not have heard about. It's not as popular. F-O-L-E, which is the fear of losing everything. That's another thing that some people uh, talk about. So you've got FOMO, like, oh my God, everybody's buying it. I got to buy it. I'm missing out. And then you got fear of losing everything. The market's going down. Oh my God, what if it goes lower? I'm going to sell and panic sell. So, you know, you've got one extreme and the other, right? So rule number three of my top 15 investing rules that you saw in the previous video. Well, if you remember, rule number three is no FOMO, no fear of missing out. If it runs, let it run. Don't chase it. Control your emotions. Now, you're going to notice as we go through this video that almost everything we talk about can be tied into one of the rules later. So this is why I said earlier in the introduction, psychology is really important as a long-term investor. It's probably the most important piece. And all of the rules, for the most part, you're going to be able to look through the rules at the very end. At the very end of this video, we'll go through the top 15 rules, do a recap, and we'll talk about each one. And it'll make a lot of sense. Like, wow, this all ties together. And I think we're kind of bookending it with, we're talking about rule number three right now, if you're missing out at the very end of this video, we're going to talk about all the different investing rules, the top 15 investing rules, and how all the different things we talk about in this video tie into those investing rules. So when you think of psychology and discipline, we just talked about FOMO. And this is interesting. Here's, can you guess who, who quoted this? The investor's chief problem and even his worst enemy is likely to be himself. This is Benjamin Graham, who, if you remember in one of the previous videos we talked about, and let's, let's just look at something here really quick. So three things, right? So all of us are really wired to think exclusively and we're all wired different. Okay. We look for instant gratification just as human beings. We want instant gratification. We don't want to wait, which is why it's so easy to, to see some of the habits that we have, especially as retail investors and as new investors and some of the younger investors, because it's really cool to see the Lambos and you know try to get rich quick overnight, get instant gratification, buy a stock, and literally have the stock go up every day for the rest of your life and never go down again. That's you know instant gratification. Or buy a stock today and it goes up 20% tomorrow. That's what we all want. That's what we look for. We all think that we can do it. We all have confidence that we can. We'll talk about overconfidence later. 
but it's that, that's really what it comes down to is we want instant gratification as human beings. And if we can understand that that's how we're wired, but that might not be the best way to think, that can be an advantage to us as an investor. We also take part as human beings in what's called herd, herd behavior. And I'll go into more about what that means. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you even see it in nature with birds and with other animals. You know, herd, we, we never think that we're actually partaking in the herd behavior because we all think that we're smarter than everybody else. But oftentimes we end up jumping into the herd behavior. And a lot of times FOMO is part of the herd behavior. Everybody's jumping in into one name. Palantir, yeah, let's, you know, run it up. It's, you know, or GameStop or, you know, any stock you want to think of, but there's, there's some herd behavior going on some of those, those, uh, those retail type stocks that we invest in. So if you look at one of these, you've seen one of these charts before, right? And it kind of starts down optimism, right? And then it goes excitement, thrill. Wow. I feel great about this investment. I'm so glad I bought all these, these stocks like, you know, Datadog and CrowdStrike, you know, last year, and they're going up every day. Euphoria, you know, in, in February, we, we had this euphoric stage, like, oh my goodness, you know, it's going to keep going higher to the moon. We're all going to be millionaires tomorrow. Well, that's the point of maximum financial risk. That's when you don't want to be buying. This is when you're buying stuff way over the moving averages. You're buying stuff that's just, you know, way expensive on the P ratios, price to sales ratios. It starts to sell off. Now we've got anxiety. We've got denial. And at denial, we, we, you know, that's a temporary setback. I'm a long-term investor. Everybody wants to tell themselves that they're a long-term investor. But if they're new investors, they might not really know what that pain's like. And I'll tell you a quick story before we go on here. I'll tell you a quick story because I think these stories are helpful for you guys. I've been investing for over 20 years in the stock market. And I was part of the dot-com, you know, crash. But I didn't have a lot of money invested. I was pretty young then, right? So it hurt, but it was like, it, it didn't, it didn't impact me the same way. Then you had the 2008, 2009, you know, financial crisis, you know, crisis and the whole mortgage meltdown and everything that hurt pretty bad. And it hurt for a long time and it wasn't a quick recovery. It wasn't like, you know, March of 2020 where it was like sell off and then it kind of rebounded quickly a V shaped recovery. The 2008, 2009, if you weren't around, that was pain, you know, and it actually, it actually, the market started going up and then it basically faked out and dumped and went lower. And it was, you know, people, I had people that I knew that were literally liquidating their 401ks at the lows, putting money under their mattress saying it was going to go to zero. Banks were going to collapse, all this stuff. There's a lot of fear, a lot of fear, you know, and they say when there's blood in the streets, you know, that's when you, when you buy. And if you would have bought at those lows back then, we had a huge bull market that ran for, you know, 10 plus years. Then we had this pandemic in 2020. And I'll tell you what, I, um, I've been through a lot as an investor and I can teach you about discipline and patience. And I, I feel like I'm really good, but I'm still human. And I'll tell you what, there was days in March of 2020, there was a couple of days there, you know, uh, March 16th or March 20th, where we're kind of, you know, every day it was like, eh, I can't go any lower and it would lower. And when you, when you have a large portfolio and you're losing, you know, like for example, the NASDAQ was down 12% on March 16, 2020. If you have, say, a million dollar portfolio, you know, you might be down 120, 150,000, depending on the beta in your account. And that's a lot of money. And that's hard for a lot of people to say, I can think past this. And I'm thinking about two years from now when it rebounds. Nobody thought it was going to rebound as fast as it did. But it's really hard in the heat of the moment because you want to live in the moment. It's easy to say that you're a long-term investor and that, oh yeah, I can, I can deal with some pain. But when you're actually in the moment, it's really easy for your brain to start second guessing. Well, maybe I wasn't right on that. You know, maybe I shouldn't have done this. What if I would have done this? Or why didn't I wait? Why didn't I have more cash? All this different stuff. All of those things are unhealthy things and comes right back to this whole the lesson here. And it's all psychology and discipline. And they're all tied together. So moving on. Um, but, but the point with that is, guys, that, you know, even the best investors will sometimes get that feeling in their stomach. I mean, you know, some of the best, you know, hedge fund managers and things are going on CNBC panicking. And I won't mention names, but you know who I'm talking about, you know, and, you know, we're short in the market and telling everybody it was going to go way lower and stuff. I mean, there was just a lot of chaos and it's hard to not think, well, what, this is different though. This is a pandemic. What if you, you know, what if, uh, you know, <laughs> what if this is a lot worse? And what if, what if this, and your brain starts running, what if this happens? What, what if that happens? So 
it's, it's very difficult as human beings. It's easy to say that we're, we're strong, that we're tough. And then we get in the moment and it's really hard for even the best of us, not to second guess. So it's important to understand that, you know, we're all human. So you go from that denial. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, you know, long-term investor. This is a temporary setback goes lower fear, desperation, panic, capitulation. It's like, you know, maybe the markets just aren't for me. Maybe I should just get out. And a lot of times people sell and then they sell, they say the stock market's rigged. They never come back to the stock market. And that's how we lose a lot of retail investors. It's pretty unfortunate, but that's kind of what happens. And you know, the, the sharks kind of take the money and rinse and repeat. And it's, 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 it's actually, you know, sad to see. I've seen it over and over. You get a new wave of retail investors. You get all excited about a certain sector or something, you know, they're not diversified. They don't really understand. They don't have the education to understand how to diversify a portfolio how to understand, how to long-term invest, have the psychology, have the discipline. And they, they, they sell at the lows, they buy high and they sell low. And you hear that over and over, but it, it happens, guys. It really does. So then you get into this depression. And this is the maximum point of financial opportunity. This is when you buy and you can make a lot of money on that rebound, just like in March of 2020. A lot of people were thinking it was going to go lower and they were waiting on cash, waiting on cash. It bounced up. Oh, this is a dead cat bounce. It's going to fake us out and go back lower like it did in 2008, 2009. But it didn't. And that's why for me, I stay disciplined and I buy at levels. I buy at technical levels. And sometimes it's right and sometimes it's wrong. But no matter what happens long term, if I'm investing in quality companies, it's a game I'm going to win. And that's, and that's what I believe. And that's what I have confidence in. And that's what I have conviction in. But you can see then it just repeats all over again and it ends at optimism. So it starts at optimism, ends back at optimism. All right, guys, there it is. So that is a snippet from Masterclass 8. Now, Masterclass 8 is about an hour and 15 minutes long. This snippet you watch was about 15 minutes. The Masterclass series is about eight hours right now. There's eight videos and about eight hours of premium content. The goal is to have at least 12 videos and around 12 hours of premium content. Now, this content is designed really to take you from a beginner investor to intermediate to advanced, and it teaches you everything from just simple due diligence, like fundamental analysis, quantitative and qualitative analysis, the benefits of stock market investing, the benefits of diverse, diversified portfolios, how to build a portfolio, blueprints, everything from psychology and discipline that we learned about today to options trading and just everything in between, even deep dive financial statements, how to, how to read financial statements and do that type of due diligence. So this entire series is everything that really I've learned over 20 years of investing throughout my career. And I'm trying to bring this information to you as if you were a new or maybe a somewhat new investor and you wanted to really take your game to the next level and learn as much as you can in a concise, in a concise manner and in, in, in a class that basically is bringing all the content you can in a correct order from A to Z. And I just don't think there's anything else that exists out there like this. I think this content is worth its weight in gold. I really do. I wish I would have had something like this when I was in my 20s. You can actually get access to this content right now through Patreon by joining the Elite. Uh, it's Elite Plus and it's Elite Plus with um, Masterclass. So there's different tiers of Elite. Make sure it says Elite Plus with Masterclass. There's nine seats. Once those seats are full, you'll still be able to get access to the Masterclass, but it's going to be through Vimeo On Demand. Udemy, you know, and some other platforms. So if you've been if you've been on the fence about joining the Patreon group and the Discord group, this is your opportunity because we are going to limit seats. There's more classes coming. There's eight. Right now, you could go sign up and get access to eight classes and eight hours of this type of content. And there's going to be at least four more videos over the next four months. And you're going to have access to that content as long as you're a subscriber to Patreon. You also get Discord benefits. We have tons of Discord channels. There's, there's lots more. Go to, go to Patreon. Check out the channels. It, it shows you bullet points exactly of all the membership benefits that you get for each tier. Love to see you on there. We'll see you in Discord. We do live trading in there every single day. But I appreciate your time and attention. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.